All right, just about done. Um, we're gonna do the details. So we're just about finished, but we've got this messed up kind of problem area. So what you want to do is define it and kind of cut it. Now I'm using a, a Sharpie a Ultra Fine Point. Great pen for outlining. Not a great pen for doing 3Ds. But since I made the choice to kind of pick it up and define a really ugly spot, I might as well go through and just kind of have some fun and uh, use it to define some other little areas. Why not? Why not? You know, if it it's kind of like if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you'll notice. Like that, I just messed up. Watch. Okay. Okay, so back to... See how easy it is to get kind of like stuck on doing these damn outlines though? Because the whole point of 3D is to not do outlines and to um, kind of define with the colors and shapes. Okay, so, but since I am defining these like crazy, I am not going to knock it if it's working. So, in this case, I'm just going to outline some stuff. Sometimes you do it and it's like, oh, that actually looks pretty good. So, or, or it needs to like punch out a certain area. Okay, so almost done. So what you do is you take a final count. And you think, what do I need for this to be done? But you don't want to ruin it either because it's really easy to add some crap at the last minute. I mean, this is kind of running the risk doing these outlines. And you can do the outlines just on one side, you know. So what I like to do is like take some random color that needs to be in there, like yellow. Yellow, put me in, coach. And there's no room for yellow, but that's not going to work. We could put yellow down in these crevasses. That'd be cool. Okay, there we go, there we go. That's where yellow's going to be. Yellow's going to be on the edges, kind of radiating craziness, ready to burst out any moment. Gnarly. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so almost done here, folks. So, to recap, pick your three colors. One's going to be light, one's going to be medium, one's going to be dark. Make your little cubes, also known as cubes, and pick your three colors and put one of the colors, the light one, on the top. Put the next light one on the right side, and the darkest one on the left. And it doesn't matter which colors you pick because you could do a million of these and they only take a few seconds. So it's good to do just to see what it might end up looking like. And it didn't exactly look that way, but that's okay. At least we knew we weren't like going to totally do something ridiculously stupid uh, color-wise. So it's kind of our way. Okay. So that's the recap. Now... Do your first outline. Make sure that the shapes and the background both match in skill. You know, like the shapes are good for both. And just to finish this up, two things. Uh, black or nearly black. I would say really stands out. Everybody has a black marker, right? I'm kind of afraid to use a straight up black marker, but let's do it. A lot of artists will say, no, use black because it's not subtle enough, right? It's not like skilled enough. 
But I'll tell you what, if you use a dark green, black is going to sit right next to it and uh, look great. So, in this case, we'll get a little carried away with the black just for fun. Okay. So of course you're looking at it, you're like, um, this doesn't look right. Then just just try something else. We're gonna make this whole area black and just kind of cut it graphically, or because you're not. I mean, you could fade it to dark green, I guess. That's a lot of black area. Now see, we're getting really risky. Because really it is a lot. And we're using a fat little nib here. We're not using a... Okay, so this is just the home stretch. Um, make some kind of bold moves towards the end. Put throw in some weird color or or uh, add little mysterious touches that you hadn't thought of originally. Um, a lot of stuff you can do, right? And you know, it's just uh, like I was saying earlier. When you look at it, and you can kind of see what it needs, you know? Okay, so without further ado, because we could do this all night long, uh, I want to say thank you. And I don't always throw in white at the end, but when I do, sometimes I use this Pentel. Uh, fine point ozone safe jumbo correction pen oh yeah now check this out you can do really thin oh, really thin lines yeah right if you're careful with it and uh, be kind of judicious with where you where you put them because it's easy to make it look like a mess but I'm just saying we might as well put them somewhere in here. The whole thing to do in these last highlights is that you want to do them so that they look like they were part of the plan. But most of the time, they're not. For most writers, they're kind of an afterthought. But really, they can make it or break it. Like I just went into that black. Okay. So, once again... Uh, there is a rule to how these highlights would go, but I don't always follow it. Um, if the light's coming from the top left, it's going to shine on the top left of each bar. That makes sense, right? But it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. It looks better when it's more cohesive s most of the time. But... All right, so that's about it. Thanks for joining me, and that's how you make your 3D graffiti look cool. Oh, you know what? Let's throw a little. Little star in there. Old style. All right, thanks a lot.